Hi guys, so with my newfound love of painting Warhammer figures, all because of the slap chop painting technique, I wanted to make a video of anyone painting their first Warhammer miniature, or anyone who doesn't like painting but wants to like painting, a bit like me. Um, yeah, this is the video for you guys, because hey, it's nice and simple, great little technique, and we're gonna, well, we're gonna run through the whole thing now. So the first thing you need to do is grab yourself a miniature, um, and anyone who knows me knows I absolutely love orcs. So I've got this lovely big orc patrol box that was sent to me by Firestorm Games. There's a link in the description, guys. Go check them out. Really competitively priced and, well, yeah, they do tons of stuff there. Okay, so we've got our sprues. Next we'll need is some little clippers or cutters and a scalpel just to tidy up some areas and some glue. So that's all we really need to get these, uh, these things off the sprues and turn them into a figure. So yeah, grab it and hold your little clippers. Um, use these as sort of the flatter edge and try and cut as near as you can to obviously the uh, the miniature. Obviously being careful not to actually cut the miniature. So if in doubt, cut a bit further away and then we can clean it up afterwards. So yeah, all the bits come off nice and easy. As I say, obviously they are already attached by a little bit to the, uh, the sprue. And yeah, cut them all out. Obviously in this case, there's only the three pieces, so nice and simple. Now we need to smooth out any of the rough edges and any of the mould lines. So simply taking your blade, say my one's a very sort of a dull one. You don't want to use a too sharp one here because you might actually cut into the plastic because it is pretty soft. So yeah, my scalpel here, I use quite a lot for doing all this. So it is quite a uh, quite a dull blade. Um, so yeah, not very good for actually cutting things, but uh, for certainly sort of deburring this item, um, yeah, perfect. So it's worth taking some time and care here, guys. Because uh, obviously when you do paint it, any of these sort of like rough edges or mould lines you didn't do, you, you will see them. And obviously you're going to see the figure, well, for a long time. So it is worth spending a bit of time now and just making sure it's all lovely and clean. Um, and yeah, clean out the mould lines and any rough bits that were, would, would have been attached to the sprue. And once you're happy with all of that, it's then time to glue it. So these figures that I'm actually using, they are snap fit ones. So you could just push them in and job done. Uh, but I prefer to glue things just to make sure that they are sort of fully secure. Plus using this glue, this uh, Tamiya Extra Thin stuff, it's the, uh, the old cement glue. And basically it works by melting the plastic. So this helps get rid of any sort of gaps or lines in between the parts. As yeah, it kind of melts one into the other. So another good reason for using this, even though this is a, a snap fit figure. So say only the three bits uh, go together really easy. Um, yeah, simple as that. One last thing to do before we are ready for painting, and that is, well, drill out the barrel. This isn't something you need to do, uh, but if you don't, you will get a lot of people say, why didn't you drill out the barrel? Um, so yeah, let's drill out the barrel. And I must admit, it does make it look that much, that much better. So yeah, taking time here, because obviously you are drilling, well, something that's very small and near to your fingers. So being careful and yeah, just slowly keep drilling, keep drilling. Uh, obviously, I have one on quite a low speed just to obviously make sure it doesn't go whizzing through the other thing. So the plastic is quite thin. And there you go, one drilled out barrel, which will make everyone happy and keep them all off your backs. And now the miniature is ready for painting. So to obviously make it easier to paint the figure, because obviously you don't want to be holding it and painting it, I 3D printed loads of these little, uh, well, little miniature holders for painting. Um, I used to use bits of cork, so you can use that. Or you can stick them on the top of any kind of like little bottle. Anything you really got to hand. And now we can prime the figure. So I basically use the cheapest sort of spray can that I can get. Um, get it for Amazon. Basically I get everything off Amazon. Um, yeah, so use that. And then obviously get all your inks or paints together. Your dipping inks, contrast paints, whatever colours you're going to use. I normally try and get them all together beforehand. Just so, well, just so they're all ready to go. Um, and obviously you need some paint brushes. And for the dry brushing, I use some cheap makeup brushes, as they are, well, super cheap. Once the model has been primed, then we can do the dry brushing um, in grey first. And you can use any grey for this. I use this one just because, well, it's the grey that I've got. So this is where using the, um, the makeup brushes is obviously great. So these were, I think it's a pack of about 12, for about £3. So we get plenty of grey on there, but then obviously once it's on there, we, we try and get it off. And then I rub it on my thumb just to check there isn't too much on there. If there is, then I'll, uh, well, I'll keep rubbing it on the uh, the little cloth. And once you're happy with it, um, yeah, just paint the figure. Well, dry brush the figure. Um, so yeah, just sort of lightly going over, not trying to go too deep, as obviously the thing we want to do here is just catch all the raised areas 
um, the protruding areas, and obviously the areas that would be highlighted. And yeah, simple as that, doesn't take long at all. And then we do another bit of dry brushing, but this time in white. Again, this is, well, this, I think this is meant for um, your airbrush guns, or whatever they're called. But um, yeah, I use it because it's just, well, what I've got. So any kind of white, same thing, put plenty on your brush, but then sort of rub most of it off. And again, my thumb's used just to check there's not too much on there. So yeah, my thumb does only look, um, well, a bit battered and bruised. And again, just sort of light dry brushing going over. Um, this time doing it even more sparingly than before. And this is kind of where personal preference comes in to, well, how much you want to go over it. Um, I've kind of got to a little technique or standard that I like. And this is pretty much that. And yeah, I kind of do like him in his sort of black and white grey sort of looking. So yeah, we get all the paints ready now that we're going to use. And I'm absolutely loving Citadel's Plague Bearer's Flesh Contrast Paint um, for my orc skin. Again, this is all per personal preference, so whatever colour you want to paint your figures, by all means do so. Um, but yeah, using the contrast paints, army paint, the speed paints, or green stuff, well, dipping inks. Um, yeah, use whatever colours obviously you got to hand, and what colours you want to use, or preference to use. Um, and yeah, you just paint normally. That's the great thing about this technique, there is no... Well, there's no hard sort of ship to it. It really is as simple as can be. Prime in black, couple of dry brushing, which is really easy, and then yeah, just paint. It's like painting by numbers. You literally paint nice and carefully, keeping within obviously the bits you want to sort of paint that colour. Um, doing your best not to go over any edges, because the one thing about the uh, the contrast paints, if you do go over an area you don't want to get the paint on, um, then you can run into a bit of trouble. Because obviously the paints go on top of the other paint, but you can still see the paint underneath, if that makes sense. And the other great thing about the uh, the slap chop painting technique is obviously the speed of it all, and the fact that you can paint miniatures so quickly. Uh, so in the past I used to hate painting, and it would take me a good three four hours to paint a miniature. Uh, I wouldn't enjoy the process of the painting, and certainly wouldn't like how it looked at the end. Uh, but this technique is, I say, it's super simple. And I can now paint miniatures in, well, about 30 minutes, maybe a little bit less. Or if I'm batch painting and doing several figures at once, then yeah, you can almost do one figure in about 15, 20 minutes. Which um, which is kind of crazy. And I say the results are just far better than anything I've ever done before. And probably anything I could have done uh, painting the conventional way. So yeah, using the contrast paints um, over the dry brushing is just a game changer and I say it, it really will make you enjoy painting um, you'll certainly love the results and it definitely means that you can get through your piles of opportunity uh, really quickly so yeah say so if you're a new new painter or an old painter that's never liked painting definitely give this technique a go um, I'm sure you'll be pleased with it and happy with it and I say the fact that I can do it and it's taken someone that used to hate painting miniatures to now absolutely loving it um, can't be a bad thing. I just want to say a quick shout out and thank you to all my lovely patrons who help support the channel as it means I can continue to sort of buy the bits and pieces I need to keep making more videos. So guys if you want to sort of see behind the scenes on what I'm currently working on before it comes out on YouTube then yeah consider becoming a patron, help me support the channel and get to see all those lovely behind the scenes stuff of what I'm currently working on. Link at the end and link in the description. And a big thank you to all my sponsors as well. So I don't have contrast paints of all the colours I need. Um, and mainly these are the sort of metallic ones. So I'm using the silver and sort of the copper one here, or bronze even. Um, but with these paints, what I generally do, rather than sort of painting normally over something, I kind of just sort of dab the paint on. Because I still like to see some of the sort of the, the highlights, lowlights, uh, the brushing that I did before. Um, so yeah, I sort of dab the paint on. I do this with the silver and I'll obviously do it with the uh, the bronze. Um, and it seems to give me a good sort of effect. It might look a little bit weird at the moment, but stick with me guys. It will get better in just a second. And the other colour that I use quite a lot of that isn't a, um, a speed paint, and that is this bone colour. Um, as I generally like to use that on any sort of cloth that goes on these guys. Um, so, because I do paint quite a lot of orcs. So yeah, I do paint them in a similar sort of fashion and I also use the bone color for the teeth um, and their nails so yeah just going around gently trying to uh, trying to do their teeth 
Um, yeah, teeth, nails, cloth, all in this sort of bone color color. And something I've recently started doing, just because obviously you want to make their lips look a little bit different, and that is use this lovely sort of pink contrast paint or speed paint. Um, and yeah, just put a little bit over the lips, just to make their lips stand a little bit out from uh, the rest of the skin. Um, and yeah, it's something I've only recently started doing, but it's uh, again one of these like simple little effects, uh, but the results just look good. So yeah. And then the last thing to finish off with, and that's to apply a wash to, well, any of the paints that you've used that aren't the speed paints or contrast paints. So all those silvers, the bronze, and the sort of the cloth looking stuff. Um, I, tend, I like to use the, uh, the soft tone wash. Um, yeah, it just obviously adds in some sort of shadows and just makes everything sort of tie in with the rest of uh, how the thing's painted. And again, I don't like my things looking too sort of neat um, and clean looking. I like my figures to look a bit more weathered and worn. Um, so yeah, so applying the wash certainly helps achieve that. And yeah, it makes everything safe, just tie in rather nicely. And this is obviously then helps improve where I did the uh, the metallic sort of paints and I just sort of dabbed them here and there. Using the wash, you can still see that there are metallic paints there, but you can also see the, the dry brushing that we did uh, right at the very beginning, which is pretty cool. Okay, so that's him looking good. Just a case of popping him off the base. That's easier to do. Even though he's super glued, he just comes off really quick and really easy. So I generally put my figures on clear bases, uh, but for the purpose of this video, I thought I'd show you just how easy it is to make up a base um, for your figures. So yeah, get the base, stick on some glue, and then I've got a box that's got a variety of uh, the grasses in it. Um, there's a little bit of cork in there and some stones. And yeah, simply dip it in, job done, cool little base. And then put them both together, and this is what you've got. And there you go, that's just how easy it is to take your sprue and turn it into a fully painted tabletop ready miniature to a standard that, to say, I thought I would never be able to achieve something this good um, and certainly not in the time that it took. So all this done in under an hour. Um, yeah, fantastic stuff. Okay, guys, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.